believe it's the first time they've been in the water like that. Yeah. Okay, I bought a little puppy. When I was young, my dad raised beagles and we trained them to rabbit hunt. And um, my husband wanted a dog, so I was like, you know what, we'll go ahead and get a little beagle and we'll teach him to hunt. And we're going to go ahead and film it to go ahead and show you how to do it because it's really easy. Beagles pretty much train themselves um, if you have a good dog. So we're going to introduce you to the new family member. So here we go. We have little Titus right here. He's only a couple of months old, probably about four months right now. So he's not going to actually be doing any hunting. It's just to take him out, get him acquainted, get him burning some energy off so he's not so destructive back at home. Get him to... um explore his environment and start sniffing around and I'll show you the process and the progress through the steps of taking a cute little puppy like this and making him a good rabbit dog. You might be wondering why I didn't bring um, Soot and the other dogs out with him. Um, Soot is Catahoula and Lab. Great dog, very smart. I would recommend that combination. Very smart, sweet, wonderful dog. But Catahoulas or sighthounds. Sighthounds hunt very differently from beagles. Sighthounds will chase anything that moves. That's why they are sighthounds. Beagles are nose hounds. They smell, they smell, they hunt by their nose. So, Soot being um, a sighthound, she will chase anything that moves, and I mean anything. So, I don't want her out with Titus right now because I don't want Titus learning to chase just anything. Part of the process is not only to teach him that I want him to hunt rabbit, but it's also to teach him that I don't want him to hunt anything else. So I don't want him chasing just any little thing. I want him to specifically hone in on just rabbit. So for that, I'm gonna have to keep him away from the other dogs when we're out hunting so that he doesn't learn to hunt the way they learn. They hunt, He wants. I want him to hunt the way a beagle hunts. And that is genetically programmed into him, it's there. He just has to be brought into the environment where he can be activated. So um, he's going to be hunting by himself for a while. And then maybe later on we'll get some more beagles to put with him and see how he does. But for right now, we're going to go have fun just doing a little bit of exploring. Game acclimated to being a good little rabbit dog. All right, and I'm using my phone to record this, as you can probably tell by the angles, just because it's easier to carry when you're walking. And when you're hunting with beagles or training a beagle, you're gonna be walking a lot. So, as you see right now, I have him on a leash. And he's just learning how to just stay close to me, do what I tell him. Um, we've had him for a couple of weeks now, so he's accustomed to his new name and, you know, coming on command. And I just wanna get him far enough away from roads or civilization or anywhere to where if he does start running I don't have to worry about him running out in traffic and as you can see even on the rope he's doing pretty good even at only a few weeks old I see Titus I hear something come here he's keeping his nose to the ground and most puppies are gonna run around and act silly and be goofy but he's actually doing really well for only being a few months old See, he knows better than me. What I just heard was nothing but birds. You smell something, boy. Check it out. So I'm just going to give him free reign to walk around and sniff and explore as he wants. When he actually realizes what he's supposed to be doing, he'll, you'll hear a very distinct yelp that beagles have. And he'll be on it. But of course, I don't expect him to actually be running anything right now, being a puppy. But it's still just to kind of get him acclimated with the process of coming back when I call him, exploring, not being too scared to go, you know, too far away from me. And that's the thing about puppies is to just get them used to the idea that even if they go off sniffing and trailing, that they will be able to come back and you'll still be there. So just getting him used to the idea that he can go off play come back I'll be here and I'm not gonna go home without him and in the meantime when I do kill rabbits or catch rabbits or somebody in the family does we'll cut off the back foot and give it to him to chew on to get him used to that smell because the scent is carried on the hind legs and so he'll get a lucky rabbit's foot 
to play with for a while, getting him used to the idea that that's what he's after and nothing else. He's doing really good, keeping his nose to the ground, that's what you want to see. He's not really doing a lot of puppy playing, he's mostly kind of just trying to figure out how to find things. Now he's sniffing something here, but looking at the ground, I would say what he's smelling is armadillos. Because the ground is pretty tore up. And normally when you see the ground ate up like that, it's either pigs or armadillos. And this is too small of an area to be pigs, so it's going to be armadillo. So he's just kind of sniffing around and checking things out. Learning what he's after and what he's not after, because we are not after armadillos. So, come on boy I heard something so I stopped and pointed into the brush and he just went right in so he's checking it out for me right now doing really good When you have something making that much noise, you can almost guarantee it's an armadillo. I could get closer and show you, because they're pretty blind and if you move slow you can get right up on them, but I kind of don't want to teach Titus to hunt armadillos, so we're just going to leave him alone for right now. Get. No, come on Titus, that's not what we asked to. He's really doing great. Typically with puppies, they want to run around and jump around and play and cut up and, you know, that's just puppies. You gotta wait for them to grow out of that before they really become good hunting dogs. But really, he's not doing that. He's pretty much hunting. The only thing is that this being the first time I've ever taken him out, he's, uh, he's afraid to go too far from me and venture off into the bush really searching because he doesn't know if he does if I'll be here when he comes back so it's just gonna at this point take a little bit of bringing him out every now and then so that he can learn that even if he goes play when he comes back I'll still be here waiting for him so he'll have more courage to go into the deep thicket but he's doing great he's not playing he's not really doing anything but uh sniffing around and hunting and looking for stuff he's just looking for stuff that's close so very good first first outing darn it I didn't have the camera on I should have because I surely just jumped up a rabbit Titus. but I'm gonna go in there and put him right where I saw it so he can get a, a good whiff of the smell and know exactly what it is we're looking for. And also by going into the thick with him and showing him that I want him to come in here, it'll show him that I don't want him to stay with me on the trail. I want him in here, give him a smell of where the rabbits are. He's on it, that's exactly where it went. I'm taking him to a place where um, it's mostly a wooded area, but there's a, a small field in the middle. So I'm taking him out there so that I can sit and he can go a long ways and still see me to kind of get him accustomed to 
it's moving out and um once he kind of gets lost in the the fun of trailing he'll 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 spread out a little bit and it's just acclimating him to going out on his own these flipping armadillos are everywhere Armadillas are a good survival food if you absolutely have to because they're easy, easy to sneak up on. They're not very smart. They don't see very well. If you're slow, you can get right up to them and just grab them. Now, they have been known to carry leprosy, so it's not something I would do unless you absolutely need it to. But prepared well, cleaned well, and cooked well, many people have eaten them. And in the Depression, people actually even survived on them. As you can see, they're very abundant. Leave it, sit. We don't want that. If you can see how close I am to it, it's only a few feet away from me. And if you want it to, you could really just, even if it looks the puppy's right on it, it's looking at me, it doesn't even see that the puppy's on it. what he did. He jumped in his little hole. He's not even covered. See? He's right here. I could reach down and grab him if I wanted to. So, even though it's not something that I would eat um, in a survival situation or a necessity, it is a good protein source that's very easy, easy, easy to get. They are abundant. I actually hear more of them around me. They're, um, they don't see well, they don't hear well, they don't hide well. And worst case scenario, if you can't catch it by hand, it's just going to go back to its hole, which is usually near, which you can easily get it. So, which is what this one did. The puppy got ahead of me, it scared it, so it got in its hole. But even in the cold, I could still reach out and grab it because he's only half covered. Kind of like a child closing his eyes and thinking you can't see it. <laughs> I've snuck up on them before, especially young ones, and reached out and grabbed them. It's pretty funny when they startle, they jump straight up. But, all right, we're going to leave you alone, little armadillo. The good news is that Titus didn't bark or try to run the armadillo which is a good sign because I don't want him to learn to chase armadillos because they are everywhere and that will keep you running in circles for absolutely nothing that we want. So he did really good, played with it, checked it out, got it on film for you, didn't chase it, didn't bark, didn't yelp. Good job, Titus. All right, moving on, trying to find more bunny rabbits. We used to have a very good rabbit population then there were some um, wolves that were reintroduced to the area. Uh, the wolves did very well, but they decimated the rabbit population. Um, I think I have some old footage of coming across the, uh, the wolf pack uh, in the past. I've stumbled across them a couple of times. Um, definitely have some trailing footage of walking up on their tracks where they were moving straight right ahead of me. But I haven't really heard the pack um, very recently. So the rabbit population is coming back. I don't know if the pack has moved on or what's happened, but they do kind of have a like a, a cycle of their tra uh, travel where they kind of make this big loop and then they'll come back so they're probably just kind of not around right now and all these armadillos that i'm coming across is very much evidence of that so um the rabbit population is booming this year so it's a good time to start training the puppy um rabbits uh rabbit dogs tend to be trained in packs they tend to be hunted in packs <coughs> And that's fine, that's the way it's normally done. But um, there is a benefit to training individually like I'm doing with Titus. Typically you'll have certain dogs that are really good jump dogs. You know, they'll find the rabbit, they'll jump, they'll start yelping, they'll alert the rest of the team. You have certain dogs that are really good at trailing and then, you know, you'll always have certain dogs that are better at cold trailing, better at hot trailing. They kind of develop their own specialty in the pack. Training individually will force him to learn all the rules and be pretty good at all of it. 
So right now he's doing his little thing and just kind of running around playing. I don't even see him anymore, which is a good thing. He's doing what I wanted, the reason I took him out here to this open field in the middle of the the thickets and it's giving him a good area to venture out and get some courage to go out on his own and I don't know where he went so he's doing just that. Good job. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but while I'm out here I'm going to show you this because I just came across this slough out here which seems to be um, a pathway for the local wolves because there are wolf prints by the dozens through this little slough. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is out in the middle of nowhere and there's nobody that lives here. There's no dogs that travel through here except for me and my dog occasionally. And she didn't make all of this. Check this out. I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera. Let me see if I can find a clean one. kind of hard to find a clean one. I'll get a clean one and show you in a minute. But you see all of this. Yeah, I heard it too, Poochie. Don't, don't freak out. Um, all of these little marks here. There's a couple of coon prints in here and a couple of armadillo prints. But for the most part, this is mostly wolf prints traveling all along this little slough. I think they've got Soot just a little bit nervous. If you come across prints and you think they're wolf, I'll give you a very good, easy way to tell if it's wolf, coyote, or dog. Um, dogs tend to dart back and forth sniffing. They're hunting. They're looking back and forth. They don't know where they're going. They're just playing. They're just hunting. They're doing whatever. They're exploring the area. So. <clears throat> If it's dogs, they'll be the prints won't be in a straight line. They'll be kind of darting side to side. If it's coyotes, it'll never be more than a handful, you know, maybe two or three, a little, small family unit. They usually don't travel in large packs. If it's a large number of prints, different sizes, different ages, and it's in a straight line, then you know you're dealing with wolves. Wolves know where they're going, and they go in a straight line, and they get there. They don't dart back and forth. They don't play around. They go in a straight pack, and they travel in a large, larger group pack than you would see with coyotes. So dogs will dart back and forth. Coyotes will be in small family units or single or pairs. Coy uh, wolves will be in large packs on a straight path. So that's the easiest way that you can tell with uh, prints exactly what you're, you're looking at. Now I'm taking him down to the, the water. We're pretty much done. I can tell he's getting tired. He's hardly leaving my side now. So we're heading back. But I'm taking him down to the, um, the river so he can get a drink and cool off. And he's never been in the water before. So it might be cute. It might be funny. He might not do it. Sometimes they're scared because this river is really dangerous and they kind of know that it's steep and drops off. So a lot of times, especially when it's like this, the dogs won't get in it. But we'll see what he does. I would rather him wait a little bit because there's a, a tugboat passing and it's about to make some really bad waves and I'd rather him not be caught up in it when it starts churning the bank. So I'm going to just let him explore and play a little bit right here on the, the bank until the water calms back down. Don't cry. 
I'll bring you to the water in a minute. You stuck? Figure it out. There you go. I think he's ready to go home. All right, he's um, gotten his drink and he's done playing and whining to go home. So I guess that's the end of our little walk for today. We'll go ahead and head back to the house. Yeah, he seems to like the idea of that. Um, this time I went ahead and took him out to more of like uh, open areas, tractor rows, fields, turn rows, um, so that he could kind of see me from a distance and just get a feel for spreading out. And that was the main goals for today. It's kind of two main goals that kind of contradict each other. I want to get him used to kind of venturing off and uh, going out on his own, but at the same time I want to make sure that he's going to come back when I call him. So knowing that he's too little to really be hunting, that's really my main goals for today. So um, I'm going to continue his, his training and I'll bring you guys along for it. So by the time he's running, you'll know exactly what to do. Rabbit dogs are really easy. Like I said, if you've got a good dog, he's going to pretty much go on instinct and eventually he's going to be hunting on his own. So you just have to spend the time with them to take them out and get them comfortable with you and to get them to a point where they understand that that's what you want. Because they love to do it, they just need to know exactly what you want them to do. So there we go. Titus' his first little outing. And we'll continue on from here and keep you up to date with his progress. And then lastly, you want to feed them or give them a treat when you get back home. Because they do absolutely love being outside. And they love hunting and they love running. They love sniffing around. They love when you take them out. So it is hard sometimes to get them to come back to you and uh, get leashed up to take them home. So you always want to treat them with treats or food or whatever when they get home. That way they get accustomed to coming back to you knowing that at least they're going to get a reward for it when they get back. So it just makes it easier, trains them to come, makes it easier when you're ready to go to pack up and go and not have to wait for dogs to come back after playing or running around in the woods all day. So there you go. That's the first installment. We'll go ahead and make a series out of it because this is going to be a process that's going to take a little while um, to do. It's going to, you know, he's going to be a puppy for a little bit, but we're going to get to it and we'll show you. We'll try to catch it on film the first time he breaks and takes on a rabbit and let you hear it and experience it. And maybe you'll get excited and go out and get you a bunch of beagles too.